Hi, welcome to the walkthrough of RPA Genie. In this walkthrough, we will learn about the bot manager activities. In the previous demo, we have seen how to extract the details of 50 separate cryptocurrencies and it was assigned to a data table called var data. We then looped through the data table and then each item of the data table was added to a queue called test crypto queue. While adding uh, each item, we had used the name of each cryptocurrency as the reference and for the transaction information, we had built a dictionary. Now when we click on this build option, we can see that we had created one key value pair for price. So the key is price and the uh, price for each cryptocurrency was the value. So this was uh, the for the previous demo. Now for this demo, we'll see how to get the uh, values from this particular queue. So first we'll see how to get the count of the queue items of this uh, particular queue, test crypto queue. And then we will see what all details each of the queue item holds, like the reference and the transaction information uh, that were we had added previously. Also, after that, we will see how to write those details into a text, text file. So first, I'll start off by dragging and, drop, uh, dragging and dropping an assign activity. I'll create a new variable called var q name. And I will give the name of our queue, test crypto queue. Next, I will drag and drop the get queue items details activity. So the get queue items enables you to get a list of items from a queue according to the filter options. So here in the input, uh, we have filter uh, option. So we need to click on these three dots and we need to click on add rule. So once we click on this field, uh, here we can see a list of options uh, based on which we can uh, do the filtering. So we, here I'll select the queue name and I'll type here, I'll type the variable that we created earlier, var queue name and I'll click on next. So the, by default, it will select the top 100 rows, but in our case, we only have 50 queue items. So this is fine. We can click on next and we can click on save. Now here we need uh, to create a variable for the output called queue items in this queue items field. Now this will be an array list. So we we'll create a variable called var queue list. I'll drag and drop a message box. And I'll type in var list dot com. Let's click on save and run the sequence. Here you can see it has returned the number of queue items. It uh, this particular queue has test crypto queue has it's fifty. So here you can confirm that it's fifty. So we'll click on OK. Now. We will delete these two activities. Next, what we'll do is we'll see uh, the details of each queue item. So if I click on view and click on search, here we have the details of uh, each queue items like reference and priority. So now we'll see uh, how to return each queue item and then get the details uh, like reference and the transaction information for each queue item. So first, I'll drag and drop the loop activity, and the condition I can I'll give it as true. Next, I will drag and drop the get queue item activity. So the get queue item activity enables you to retrieve a list of transactions from a specified queue. So here, just like the previous uh, activity, here we have the filter options. So we'll click on that, three dots, and then we'll click on add rule. Here again, I'll select the queue name and type in the variable var queue name. Click on next, click on next again, and then save. 
here the output will be in the form of transaction qr2 so we need to create a variable here var transaction i2 next i'll drag and drop a decision so here uh, i'll give a decision this is a case when it has finished looping through this uh, queue items so at the end of the 50th queue item if, uh, the transaction item will be null so when that happens it should break out of this loop so i'll give that condition if var transaction item equal equal null then it should break so i'll drag and drop a break activity all right now i'll drag and drop a message box here so here i'll type in var transaction item dot reference so this message box uh, we'll replace with uh, another activity called append line to write it to a text file so for now we'll use the message box so we have another, finally we have one more activity called the update transaction status activity so after it has done the processing that is after it has displayed uh, the name of the cryptocurrency which is stored in reference uh, it should update the status over here so here if it's new it once it has uh, finished processing it should it will uh, change its status to completed so that's why we need, we need to use this activity so the update, update transaction status uh, is the status of the bot uh, manager transaction item which could be either failed or completed so here uh, it's already uh, here this is already uh, the status will be completed by default and the transaction item is the var transaction item that we used before now we'll click on save and i'll run the sequence so here you can see it uh, so the first q items uh, reference which is the name of the cryptocurrency is shown this is the second one third one fourth and it goes on so i'll just go ahead and stop this right now now what we'll do is i will i will uh, use a breakpoint here and i'll run the sequence again so now we can see what is the transaction information also and the reference so i'll click on save now we can see in the queue if we go back to the queue here you can see the it was pending 50 now it's written 45 that is because the uh, the press, uh, press, uh, it has processed five q items uh, the process in our case was just displaying the name of the cryptocurrency in a message box so once it was done for that it has uh, it has completed and now remaining 45 is there so now what we'll do is i've used the breakpoint point over here now we'll run the sequence once again All right. So here, if you click on this immediate panel, now we will see what var transaction item details holds. So we can see uh, here it has uh, details like this. The uh, yeah. So we'll copy this and we'll take the notepad and we we'll paste it here. So we can see uh, right now. Uh, the var queue item holds so and so details we can see this uh, so what we are looking for is the reference and the transaction information so here we can see the reference that is the name name of the cryptocurrency and the transaction information which was the dictionary is the price so here we will type in var transaction 
like the dot reference so right now uh, in this run the name of the cryptocurrency is five coin now we'll see the price of that so to get to retrieve the price we need to type in var transaction item dot it's stored in transaction information so dot transaction information so once we hit enter we'll get this dictionary so to call the key, we need to call the key price so what transaction information dot transaction information and price yeah so it will return the price of so what we'll do is we'll take uh, the name and price of the remaining q items and write it to a uh, text file all right so we'll stop right now click okay we will remove this uh, message box and right now i'll create a test text file called test crypto and here instead of that message box i'll use that append line activity i'll give the file path of uh, this text file so copy this path all right now as for string we can give name plus var transaction item dot reference all right then plus price plus var transaction item dot transaction information price all right let's click on save and we'll run the sequence here you can see the pending of this uh, crypto this queue test crypto queue is reducing and we, if we open the text file we can see the name and the price of each cryptocurrency is being written to this text file for each of the uh, for each q item from this q so that's all for this video thanks for watching